Welcome to data engineering. We'll have three parts of data engineering. And the first part is about gathering data, statistics, visualization, and data cleansing. A second part is gonna be feature engineering, imbalanced data, scaling the data, and then splitting the data into different parts for training, validation, and testing. A third part of data engineering is just the process of moving data around and being able to deploy machine learned models in infrastructure that allows a scale up to large scale systems or with large data sets. So let's talk about the first one first, okay? The part one is gonna be gathering data. It's a process of consolidating disparate data like Excel sheets, CSV files, maybe a SQL table or database, a PDF report, cloud storage, all of that into a single repository. For time series data, the tables are joined to match features and labels at particular time points. Statistics and statistical summaries might sound a little bit intimidating, but we're gonna use some very nice tools within Python to be able to calculate statistics of our data, be able to understand how many data sets we have, the mean, standard deviation, quartile information, and other statistical information. We'll build statistical profiles of the data to show what's been collected and the quality of that data. Next, we'll move on to visualization. Visualization is a graphical representation of the data. Visualization is particularly important to have a first look at the data to analyze data diversity, relationships, what's missing, any bad data, or other factors that may influence decisions to exclude or include an appropriate subset for training. Next, we'll go on to data cleansing. It's a process of removing bad data that may include outliers, missing entries, failed sensors, or other types of missing or corrupted information. This is particularly important in machine learning because just a few outliers can greatly influence the results. Next, we're gonna go on to data engineering part two. This includes feature engineering. It's a process of selecting and creating the input descriptors for machine learning. Categorical data is converted to numeric values such as true equals one and false equals zero. Feature engineering creates indicators from images, words, numbers, or discrete categories. Features are ranked in order of significance. Unimportant features are identified and removed to improve training time, reduce storage costs, and minimize deployment resources. Next, we'll go on to imbalanced data and look at the problem of when you have certain labels that have, are more or less represented in the data. We'll oversample or undersample certain classes to restore the balance. Scaling data is important to scale values between zero and one or negative one and one to improve the training process. Some machine learning methods require that, whereas others, it isn't as important. There are different methods for scaling and we'll talk about a couple different ones that you can use. The final topic for this second part of data engineering is splitting the data. This ensures that there are independent data sets for training, testing, and validation. The test set is to evaluate the model fit independently of the training and to improve the hyperparameters without overfitting on the training. The validation may come with a third split to evaluate the hyperparameter optimization. We use cross-validation as an alternative approach to divide the training data set into multiple sets that are fit separately and tested on the other set. The parameter consistency is compared between the multiple models. The input features and output labels are separated into separate data structures and loss functions such as squared difference between the predicted label and measured label is a typical loss or objective function. 
A confusion matrix is a graphical representation of misclassification errors. The third part of this is deploying the data in ways that allow us to access it for machine learning, visualization, and other ways, and also deploying the machine learned models. We deploy the machine learned models in server infrastructure that allows us to use it maybe as a web API or other service for applications. Hope you enjoy this series of lectures that we'll go through on data engineering and look forward to your comments and suggestions for additional content.